Amusement parks are places of fun and enjoyment for entire families to laugh, eat fatty, guilt-free foods, and embark on fun, thrilling rides and attractions. But from time to time, there is that one attraction that parents warn their kids about and forbid them to ever visit due to the fact that it's too scary for them. Different parks have dabbled in having family-friendly, fun environments that are aimed for all ages and mixing in scary attractions that can bring nightmares for those who dare to experience them. From Alien Extraterrestrial at Disney's Magic Kingdom, Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour at Tokyo Disney, Disneyland, and the Haunted Castle at Six Flags Great Adventure, just to name a few examples. But in 1968, a year after the park's grand opening year, Six Flags Over Georgia tried their hand at dishing out frights on a permanent basis. Now, let's take a casual stroll inside of this giant, nightmare-inducing, dark, gaping mouth, shall we? Six Flags Over Georgia opened on Friday, June 16, 1967, with six different sections of the park to represent each of the six flags. That being the British section, Confederate section, French section, Georgia section, although the state of Georgia was never its own independent nation, which technically makes Six Flags Over Georgia five flags over Georgia, but also the USA section and finally the Spanish section. Within the Spanish section held one massive building called Castillo de Soto, which held other things such as a couple of shops and the Casa de Fritos restaurant. At the time, the most most thrilling ride and or attractions were not located in the Spanish section of the park, such as the Dahlonega Mine Train, which was an opening day attraction that is still at the park till this day, and Tales of the Okie Finoki. For those wondering, it's where Monster Mansion is located now. But in 1968, for Six Flags Over Georgia's second year of operation, the Spanish section would receive the attraction of attractions, one that brought fear and anxiety more than any coaster or flat ride could at the park. And absolutely no other show or attraction could compete with it, that being the Horror Cave. The Horror Cave, located on the grounds of the former Casa Loco attraction, debuted in 1968 to enhance the Spanish area of the park and to bring something that mainly was aimed for kids and young adults, but some would say, especially at the time, that this nightmare-fueled attraction was meant for adults. When you arrived at the Horror Cave, you were greeted by a giant menacing face, with its mouth wide open resembling The Nun from the 2018 Conjuring 2 spin-off film, The Nun. I mean, look at one of the movie posters from the film. Looks familiar? You enter the attraction through the mouth, and she's running from the mouth. But these two things actually have nothing in common except for the Warner Brothers Company, that The Nun was released by Warner Brothers Pictures, and Six Flags acquired the rights to Warner Brothers Looney Tunes animated characters for use in Six Flags properties. Anywho. In the queue line of the Horror Cave was a graveyard which was located in the courtyard of the Spanish Fort, where the likes of Vampire and Frankenstein were laid to rest. At least the sight of a coffin and the tombstones indicate that they were buried there. You would enter in through the giant mouth of this being, stepping on the tongue that doubled as a ramp, which was very squishy. Immediately when you walked into the mouth of the creature, you would take a sharp break that would place you into the actual building itself. Being that this was a walkthrough attraction, just like any standard haunted house attraction, you would walk through in a single file line. Next, guests would find themselves walking through a dark long stone hallway, which on the left hand side of that hallway had a wall that came up waist high to an adult and up to the shoulders of kids. On the other side of that short wall, there was extremely aggressive looking boiling water. Not that the water was hot per se, it would just be violently bubbling as three creatures that resembled the creature from the Black Lagoon would shock and surprisingly pop up out of the water. Which was interesting because as the two on the end would surface, the one in the middle would go back down into the water and they would keep rotating in that motion. Once you reach the end of that long hallway, guests would take a right which led them to the most daunting scene of the whole attraction that due to multiple reports, traumatized and caused tons of nightmares to young kids who walked through this attraction not fully knowing what to expect, thinking it was just a fun year-round walkthrough attraction, being that it was at a theme park and it's not Halloween. But once guests took that right at the end of the long hallway, they were greeted with a scene that was extremely dark with only black light to illuminate the room. There lies a woman there, sleeping in her bed. There were two creepy men, with one somewhat resembling Mr. Hyde, the alter ego of Dr. Jekyll, and the other one as a big bald monstrous man. The character that resembled Mr. Hyde sawed off the woman's head and is standing there holding her decapitated head up while the two men sadistically laugh while her body remains on the bed, with a bloody looking substance leaking from her body down the side of the bed. This was done by the folds of the bedsheets that were arranged so that there was a little sink in there where it could drain out 
and circulate back around. The next room held a Frankenstein scene that took place in a mad scientist lab that had a bunch of strobe lights, neon, and things spinning and functioning. The mad scientist would aggressively turn on a switch which would send an electric shock to the monster that was underneath the sheet. With the strobe lights going on and off in this scene, with him turning on the switch, it would show the face and outline of the monster that was to come to life which resembled Frankenstein. Guests would then take a right that would lead them up a staircase. That, if not aware nor paying attention, would be massively startled by the monsters that would be staring at you from the ceiling while you were walking up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, you were greeted with a room that had a decor of a classical Victorian English period. In that room were two coffins under fluorescent lights that were separated. In the coffins were two vampires, one male and one female. While the male vampire had on a tuxedo, the female vampire had on an elegant white dress as they laid asleep in their individual coffins with an effect that had their chest pump up and down as if they were breathing. In that room was a beautiful Victorian style window that gave the illusion of a thunderstorm outside. During the scene while being terrified that those vampires were alive, guests scared out their wits would try to walk through this room attempting to be quiet in hopes of not waking them up, while eerie daunting music of an old organ would unsettle guests by playing in the room while the keys would be moving on their own. Guests would then take another right, find themselves having to walk across an unstable swinging bridge. While dark and unsettling in the room, attempting to cross the bridge, as guests looked down, there was a giant spider that caught someone in their neck. But taking a closer look at the body, the spider sucked the blood out of it while the body remained trapped in the spider web shriveled up from the loss of blood. Under the web were the remains of the victims that the spider had sucked the blood out of, and their bodies and flesh deteriorated, only leaving the bones of the poor unfortunate souls. By crossing the bridge and being shocked by what guests were witnessing, suddenly they would notice that the giant spider in the corner dropping down, lurking and seeking to have them as its next meal. Finally, after crossing the bridge and escaping the terrifying layer of the giant spider, guests would come across a platform that held to what many believe was a very bizarre end of the attraction's experience. To escape the terror that the horror cave held within. To exit the attraction, the only thing in their way was a long slide where guests would have to have a fun time sliding down the slide to escape. Almost as if Six Flags Over Georgia was reminding them at the end of the day, hey, remember it's a theme park. Have fun and here's a long fun slide for you to slide down. Have a Six Flags day. But the Horror Cave was an attraction that many that experienced it during its time know about how horrifying it was. But it doesn't get its recognition nowadays for there isn't much information on the attraction and not many photos due to it being dark with not many having, or should I say, those wanting to preserve the history of the Horror Cave because it was so terrifying to them. But both the Horror Cave and Tales of the Okie Finoki were both products of Sid and Marty Croft who are most notably known for HR Puff and stuff in Land of the Lost, which were the complete opposite of what the Horror Cave and Tales of the Okie Finoki did displayed and induced nightmares to many throughout the years. So what happened to the horror cave? And why hasn't there been a permanent walkthrough attraction like this at Six Flags Over Georgia or any other Six Flags park since? The horror cave closed for a couple of reasons. Many guests, mainly parents, taking their kids through a walkthrough attraction at a theme park that is aimed for family fun and a good time, would furiously complain throughout the years of the gore and the lack of family friendliness that commenced inside of the horror cave. Along with these complaints led to the park's decision to try to tone down the experience, which ultimately led to part of the demise of the horror cave. Another Another reason being, Penn Central, who owned Six Flags, sold their assets to Bally Manufacturing. In 1982, Bally merged their pinball division with Midway to form the Bally Midway Manufacturing Division. Midway, who produced pinball machines under the Bally brand, acquired the U.S. distribution right to Pac-Man two years prior in 1980. Therefore, with Bally Manufacturing officially acquiring Six Flags, they rethemed the old Spanish fort Castillo de Soto at Six Flags Over Georgia to the Pac-Man play fort. Lastly, any remaining hopes of the horror cave's existence would come to an end when the 1984 fire of the Haunted Castle walkthrough attraction at Six Flags Great Adventure which had no sprinklers or smoke detectors, with reports that the exit door was chained off which in turn all played huge factors that led to a group of nine teenagers whom entered together being trapped inside the attraction while it was engulfed in flames killing eight of the nine teenagers. This led to Six Flags closing any similar walkthrough attractions at all their parks along with several other New Jersey Haunted House attractions having to close while fire inspections were pending. The horror cave that opened in 1968 would close for good after almost two decades of operations at Six Flags Over Georgia. The horror cave was the sum, one of the best things about the early days of Six Flags Over Georgia. Along with the tales of the Okie Finoki, the horror cave served as one of Sid and Marty Croft's terrifying yet wonderful park experiences that left a multitude of guests, young kids in particular, who visited the park while the attraction was open, completely scarred as some of the gruesome scenes that have permanently seeped and still remain in their cerebellum from their daunting horror cave experience. The horror cave still lives on in the memories of those who experienced it, or from those who were terrified to walk through the gaping mouth of the hideous monster.
The only thing that remains of the horror cave is the shell of the building that housed the walkthrough attraction that now serves as the entrance of the Joker Funhouse coaster and in an arcade area. This is the view you would have today if you were timidly walking into the attraction looking back, hoping someone would save you from the utter dismay that awaited inside. The former Q-Line entrance has no remnants of where the tombstones in the graveyard once were. The windows outside the building still remain but are painted purple now. The seating area still remains as you can see people in the picture were sitting in the area behind the entrance. And you can still see where the building's exterior is still the same where the former Casa de Fritos restaurant once served guests, which is now left abandoned today after it later on became the Carrot Club. Now with the joke Theme. All we're left with is the ha 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 that is left on the door the Joker knows of the horrors that resided there in the past. Which I must say that it is ironic that what is now the kids area of the park was once home to the scariest non-seasonal attraction at Six Flags Over Georgia in the course of over 50 years of the park's existence. Which most people who visit the park today have no idea what sat there for years at Six Flags Over Georgia as they casually walk through from Bugs Bunny Boomtown to the Justice League area of the park aiming to find something family friendly to do with their kids. Six Flags Over Georgia still keeps up the facade of some haunted attractions, such as that of alien abduction or even that of Casa de Muerte, but those only serve their purpose when open as seasonal haunted attractions for the likes of Fright Fest, but none on a permanent scale like the Horror Cave, which nightmare induced kids on a daily operating basis at Six Flags Over Georgia in the late 60s to the 80s. The Horror Cave, as bizarre as it was, truly captivated the curiosity of park goers who saw the gaping mouth of the monster and dared to enter. It stuck in the memory of kids in that day who are now with families of their own, just like those who slid down the slide at the end of the walkthrough would sometimes get stuck on the slide, from many people spilling their sodas causing disgusting and annoying stickiness. Some may still be able to hear the sounds of the entrance music to the Horror Cave. And some may be able to hear the traumatizing sinister laugh of the evil man that cut off that woman's head in that gruesome scene in the attraction. But all who experienced the attraction can agree that Six Flags Over Georgia was on to something odd but special. And some may even say that from the beginning, it was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm.